There were about 168 blue screen shots in this one little sequence. I'm going to be inclined to say that this guy's CG all the way up until right here. This is ridiculous. But isn't it cool? Yeah, it is no, cool. it's amazing. We spent probably seven months talking about how we were gonna shoot it. Can I guess how you did it before? Uh... Yes, please do. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Visual Effects Artists React. We are joined here by Joe Farrell. He's incredibly accomplished. He's worked on a ton of films that you've watched, that you've heard of, that you love, including uh, most recently being a visual effects supervisor on Shang-Chi. Yeah, I was the uh, additional visual effects supervisor, mainly working on the second unit. I absolutely adore being on set. A lot of people don't because on set can have vast periods of time of boredom. Shang-Chi was far from boring. I just smile from ear to ear on working on this film because it was so much fun. Oh, and Clint's here. Welcome back, Clint. Good to be back. Thanks for having me. Good to have you back, man. Yeah, it feels like, uh, it feels like I never left. All right, let's jump in. Let's just jump on in. You have the wrong guy. Does he look like he can fight? Come on, bro. So there's a lot of talk about this bus sequence that we did. Because of the pandemic, we had to shoot about five different countries in the world and brought together by artists all working from home. So it was quite an achievement and quite a spectacular sequence. <laughs> I mean, it's a fight scene, right? So I gotta comment on the fight. It's like, that's so classic Jackie with the whole jacket thing, and it just comes from Brad, jacket, you know? Yeah, like... exactly. So Brad Allen, which unfortunately, he passed away recently, he bought his stunt team he'd been working with over the years with Jackie Chan and the stunt crew over there. That department was a powerhouse with this movie. Andy, uh, the stunt supervisor for this sequence, I think he'd spent many years working with Jackie, and he was definitely channeling the use of all garments and definitely utilizing the bus itself. The bus became part Part of the fight and becomes quite integral to the entire sequence. We had uh, a total of four buses, two of them we had to modify for real stunt work and then the other two were one of them was on some air bladders and the other one we had elevated up on this amazing rig where they could hold the whole bus and articulate it like 40 degrees amazing. to 30 degrees. And so Young Lee and Chris Cowan, the action designer was with Brad Allen and they put together a whole previs for this, right? I would assume. I believe it's called stunt viz. So initially what happens is they stunt visit, they work out the whole fight sequence with similar cameras to what you're using. We then needed to, as the visual effects department, would come in and pre all the pieces that integrated with that. Got you. So they would then modify the stunt viz according to what we had pre and it was a back and forth process to finally get this. So all this is shot on blue screen in Sydney. Oh, really? Yeah, well, I come from a compositing background, and so my pet peeve is car comps purely because of just simple things that you can do that sometimes go missed and make it look fake. Such as? I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I wanna know. <laughs> no, no, that's my secret sauce. No, all right, yeah, I'll tell you. There were about 168 blue screen shots in this one little sequence. Yeah, so looking at this, right, there's a bunch of blurry edges and they're perfect edges, right? How do you pull blue screen keys like this that give you perfect edges? attention to detail. Tiny sections where we're pulling out an area there and redoing it and doing a luminance key here and an edge there or a hand paint fix here and there. Gotcha. So when you have something that has like blurry edges, you're basically going in and doing little tiny masks around each one of those and doing a specific key for each edge depending on what kind of edge it is. Correct, yeah. I mean, you could get lucky and do an amazing overall key and pull it off, but I think that was probably 0.001% chance of that actually happening. <laughs> I think you'll find the 99.9% nine percent of the time it is just the artists working really really hard to achieve that goal yeah this is only a fraction of the scene too this goes on for like 10 minutes it's like a ridiculous I think it's, scene i think it's five minutes and 32 seconds or something long i know really? i literally worked on this sequence for a year and a half we needed to choreograph it in such a detail because all the people that are on the bus they move around we're pulling out chairs we're pulling out poles they had to pull the windows off because a lot of the times the reflections are just the crew goodness so you're adding back in the reflections and the windows and of course the background too. When we're shooting inside, those reflections are natural. The interesting part is actually the arrays and what's going on outside. So you've got people standing out there, you've got blowers, you've got people rocking it, you've got lights that come in, reflectors. The speed at which you're moving at, you can't prevent them from being in the shot. You'll do what you can, you're like, can we move the reflector? And the DP will be like, all right, I can move him out here, is that any better for you? But you're moving at such a speed. We do these setups every sort of 20 minutes. So if you imagine moving 200 people every 20 minutes. Oh yeah. <laughs> That shot, we spent 
probably seven months talking about how we were going to shoot it because it's a very, very complicated shot. Can I guess how you did it before? Uh... Yes, please do. Clint, this is our chance. We're gonna All right. Sherlock Holmes this with, with the person right in front of us that can actually tell us how it's done. <laughs> Put on the goggles. He's probably not even touching Razor Fist, right? Razor Fist, separate plate, and then he's his own plate, and then the background is probably another plate, and then the back background is probably another plate, right? I'm tempted to say that his jacket is CG, but if perhaps his entire body is CG. I can also see that he's like on wires or something. Or is he being picked from? Is it the hips? And then you gotta get that out of there so the shirt is redone completely and the legs probably aren't even real. And then you're transitioning out, boom, to a different shot of him right there. All right, you guys want to let me tell you or you want to yeah. keep going? Yeah, yeah. tell us. Tear you're kind of getting there. It's a real jacket, it's a real shirt, it's real Simu, and it's real legs. It's a CG razor. The entire bust, the foreground, background, and everything else is CG. Oh, it's way easier that way, yeah. <laughs> so much easier. And are you doing a transition on him, or is this one long take where you actually move the camera? This move happens over four seconds, and it travels 22 feet. So the camera just goes <laughs> like that. Yeah. And we tried getting a motion control camera to shoot it, but we couldn't get it into the country. The pandemic caused us not to be able to get the huh. Milo. So really what it is, is it's a rail and had it so that the camera would drop through a pulley system and hmm. they would jump off these ladder and fall. And it's all landing on blue screen. So all the lighting you're seeing here is the artistry of the Luma compositor who did this and us just saying, all right, let's bring more interaction to it. And, you know, I, hopefully we did a good job. It looks great. I saw this and I was like, Rush Hour 2, you know? Jackie going up the thing, running up the bamboo and everything. Yeah, this sequence was pretty special. The way that camera just like swoops and then becomes grounded and real suddenly. It's, it's like you gone. barely notice, like this is all crazy, 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 and boom, real people. I joke about this sequence because I think he kills seven people in this sequence. <laughs> but he does it in such a Charlie Chaplin way that I think that it doesn't really bother anybody. But he does murder like some that man dies. poor 49ers. I mean, that guy might have a family. I don't know. <laughs> Ooh, I love these kind of falls. Brutal. All right, so this shot right here. Woo! That's Doop. sick. I'm going to be inclined to say this guy's CG all the way up until right here. Now it's real. I think the beginning is real, and I think the end is real. Or you could do the whole thing for real. Who dude, knows? Or it's for real. It's, it's really it's hard like, to say. because There's this Marvel gloss that's like on every <laughs> Marvel film. Yeah. And it makes the CG and all the compositing and all the real stuff all blend together yeah. really, really well. I would say that um, pretty much from the outset, Chris said, we shoot as much real as we possibly can. Cool. So with this particular shot, the two guys on the left are real, and the guy on the right, he's digital all the way through to the end due to the amazing animation done by Rodeo FX. We did actually have a performer doing that, but we needed to just tweak it enough that it pulled it out of the live action. Mm -hmm. So you ended up with a really good reference. Yes, <laughs> yes. He drops three stories down and he swings around and he does this kind of move, but he needs to do it in a way that's threatening. He's trying to come down with the purpose of taking out Shang-Chi. And so I think Destin suggested that we go with having him come and just kick really hard. And we watched many videos of parkour guys and they tuck up really tight and then explode out. And that's sort of a very sort of martial arts kind of move. And we thought that would sort of sit nicely. I'm not a fan of sort of, you know, losing weight on, mm. on CG characters. Mm, so yeah. That's, you know, even if it's a little heavier than you would expect. That's better. Probably. It's better to lean a little bit into that. Yeah. And what we're looking at here in the background is the scaffolding actually there? In no, any it's part? all digital. So everything's yeah. digital. But because it's all on a mirrored surface, it's reflecting the environment. And if you notice, the camera never once stays still in this entire sequence. So the camera constantly moving means all those reflections had to be individually rendered. Wow. Um, and this one has about 110 shots in the sequence. And so they're black uniform on a very dark night in a dark city. The lighting and the billboard placement all needed to be meticulously done so that you could silhouette everything. That's really, really clever and also incredibly time consuming. Oh, that's <laughs> ridiculous. And a lot of the time we actually were confused what direction the camera was facing. You needed to know that you were looking at a building rather than looking through scaffolding at the city on the other side. Interesting. And so we did a lot of work and actually trying to figure out how the reflection looked and you knew specifically when you were looking at the city versus the reflection. Huh. You'll see all the reflections have a slight lift in their densities to help with the readability. Oh, I see. So like all the black levels have been kind of just bumped slightly. So even the darkest part of the reflection is still slightly brighter than the 
darkest part of the people in front of it. Correct. But that obviously meant that we needed to split the reflection off from the main one. So they <laughs> oh, needed to boy. even more roto. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Complicated. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But isn't it cool? Yeah, it no, cool. it's amazing. <laughs> hey, to all of y'all that have just stumbled upon VFX Artists React for the first time, consider subscribing. You're going to have a good time. Lots of other people have kept coming back. I think you're going to be one of them. So I heard that you snuck a shot into this movie. Snuck a shot you in? Snuck, you snuck something in. We always in visual effects try and sneak something in. No, I mean, you know, there's all this talk about sort of virtual camera work and all the technology that's coming along with Mandalorian. And there's a shot in this particular one where I did a virtual camera work, but it's so old school that it's amazing you can take old fashioned techniques and just apply them right into the middle of something so complex. <laughs> It's at the end, right? The helicopter uh, shot? No, it's in the beginning. It's right in the beginning. Three gotcha. shots in. Clint. <laughs> I know exactly. It's 57 frames long. <laughs> oh my god, and he's probably <laughs> not it's right here. The reason it was so interesting and difficult is because when you're pre visiting shots, you can go out to a pre -vis company and you say, look, there's a billboard, there's a helicopter, and there's an explosion. But when you actually try and put it into a 239 aspect, the audience needs to know what they're looking at instantly because mm. the shot is only just over two seconds long. You've got a little hint of the billboard up until that point. Now, the problem with a billboard is it's a giant light source and you don't want the people going, look, a billboard, and then the shot's gone. And you're like, hang on, how is he now doing that? And why is the window gone? You don't want that confusion. We did a couple of versions in previews and we we're trying to throw different ideas, a camera up top looking down and then a camera coming around the back. But all of those things would sort of miss one of those factors. You wouldn't see the billboard or you would only see the explosion. So I ended up taking my son's model aeroplane, suspending it on a ruler with a piece of nylon string, getting two chairs, and then just basically framed the chairs knowing where the billboard was. And I would just do different kinds of camera moves, just filming this little model aircraft. And then I would take that, I'd track it and try different ideas and change different speeds and then tweak it and then ended up generating a camera to show that to the director and they loved it. And that was my version of a virtual camera. I'd, I'd love to great. see the like the official Marvel breakdown where it's like doing all the wipes and then it just shows like... And it shows my garage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it shows it just shows my garage <laughs> and a model thing. It seems like your solution was just to simply have a shot that orbited, started kind of focused on the billboard and then turned our attention over to where the explosion happened, kind of pivoting around the helicopter in the center. Yeah, the helicopter was not as important. The billboard was sort of like reasonably important. But in this particular one, that explosion kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger because we needed to draw your to it. Well, it's a great lesson on clarity because it's so important. If your audience is confused, then who cares? It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Yeah. Hey, that's a great story, though. I love that. It's like you do what you can with what you got and like you don't have to do the whole yeah. thing. You, you make it work. You know, this is actually a fairly traditional movie making on this film. It looks technologically savvy and we are using amazing technology and we have all the gadgets and all the gizmos and amazing rigs and so on but it's all just real sets real rigs that are really moving there's no fantastical shots in here and if there is a fantastical shot it's actually done with rigs that can now do fantastical things for people out there who've been wanting to get into this as a career do you have any suggestions for anybody who's trying to get into it don't get into it unless you're passionate you have to be passionate and if you're not you won't survive so i'm just ridiculously passionate about movies making or just storytelling and being able to do it in any way shape or form that I can is why I, I, I enjoy this so much. That's awesome. You guys may have heard of the series Jim Connor where Ken Block goes out there and does incredible stunt driving. Well Joe here made his own version with his son called Koala Connor where they took a little Tesla plastic toy yeah, car. Yeah we found thing. it in the rubbish and we did it up to crazy and we do about 20 miles an they hour. They modded it. <laughs> they like built their own battery and stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's actually really good and a great example of some awesome filmmaking you can just do on your own with with buddies or whomever. It only has like 300 views. I think it'd be really cool to give it the, uh, the old VFX RS React. Let's try and get to 500 views. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it a little love here and bump that up. We'd I think certainly it'd, appreciate it. I think it'd be really cool. Hey everybody, it's me, Jake here, back for another brand integration with today's sponsor, Squarespace. Now I heard that Jordan has been doing these integrations lately and well, I don't want her to take my job. So I've come back to do these integrations using state-of-the-art technology and I'm just happy to be here, but I'm even happier to tell you guys about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the best way for people that don't know how to build a website to build a website. 
and they have a bunch of different features that you can get when you use them. First and foremost, they have 24-7 award-winning customer service and award-winning templates. Don't forget that. You can create a members-only area on your Squarespace website and have members-only benefits that appear in that section. It's pretty great. Say you're part of a little bit of a bigger team. Well, guess what? With Squarespace's multiple contributors tools, you can assign different roles and use the strengths that different people are good at to contribute to your website. With Squarespace's unmatched traffic overviews tools, just like how this robot records everything in the studio all the time, Squarespace's traffic overviews are gonna record who comes to your site and what pages they land on and give you an overview of what their experience is like so that you can better tailor your website site to who's ever visiting. With Squarespace, you can use their social media tools to post one time on your Squarespace website and then have that post automatically format and go out to your other social media profiles. It makes posting across multiple profiles a heck of a lot easier, a lot more effective, and it's going to save you a bunch of time and probably some money. So if you're interested in getting some amazing technology for yourself, head on over to squarespace.com slash corridor crew and you get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash corridor crew. Or just click the link in the description below. Oh, hey Christian, um, I need to do a meeting with Nico right now. Do you, do you think you could carry me upstairs? Sure, Thanks. Thanks for, and, yeah, this is, this is great. I know I'm kind of heavy. I'm trying to keep the pounds off. <laughs> so we often ask for what are your favorite shots from films, TV shows, classic films. I would love to know what are some of your favorite VFX from YouTube videos and other online creators. I'd love to do a breakdown of some of the stuff that we've seen on YouTube from some of the wonderful digital artists here. Also, if you are a big fan of this show and would love to have longer episodes, well, we actually do extended episodes on our website. They're cut a little bit slower. We go a little deeper into the knowledge. It's a good time. Quarterdigital.com, check it out. Joe, thank you immensely for joining us yes, on this show. Yes, it was my pleasure. Anytime you guys want to invite me onto this therapeutic couch, I'm here. Don't forget to also check out Clint's channel at youtube.com slash Yeah, I'm you know, teaching people how to do VFX in my weird way. So come on over, we're just hanging out. It's a good time. All right, Joe, thank you so much. To all thank you, you watching, thank you so much. We'll see you either this Sunday, tomorrow, because we have another video usually on Sundays, or next Saturday if you don't watch our other videos for some reason.